Hello. I want to take our time exploring where the last video left off, which is what is going on here with this last line, penguin dot eat donut, and then we send in donut for penguin. I wrote a nice Java comment about that line, and I want to give you a diagrammatic view of how this code is interacting. Because unlike procedural Java, where we're basically writing everything in main, and execution starts at the stop of top of main and goes to the end and then stops, that is still true, but we have a number of fancy execution loops that are going on here. And I want to make sure that those are clear in our brains, because that is the core idea of this lesson, is that we are using one class, creature land, which has our main method. It's got our, our programs controlling main method in it. And it is using our blueprint class creature and our blueprint class size donut to uh, orchestrate what goes on in creature land. Now remember, these are blueprint objects. Blueprint is my term. Uh, these are objects that are used to create, or these are classes that are used to create objects because there isn't a static here. Remember we used to say public static string? Right now these are non-static members or member variables or object members. So that when we are over here in creature land and we say new creature, it goes to this blueprint, it finds the matching class that has the name of whatever constructor you call, and it creates us an object in memory. So we are going to have a creature coming out that has a container for its name, its species, both strings, and then it has a private container for byte size in percent. And those uh, that private member is manipulated by its methods down there. Similar pattern. So after we create our creature object, we store it in a handle variable called penguin. So let's not get confused. Creature is the name of our type. So this variable, penguin, is of type creature and can store references only to creature objects. Remember we used to say, or we still do, we have variable type string and we can put strings and in quotes inside of it. Well, in our case, we are dealing with a creature object and the variable is named penguin and it can only point to creature objects. So we make our creature object, store it, a uh, reference to it in variable penguin. We set its name, we set its species, we even use its method set byte size in percent to say that this particular creature only eats 5% of the donut at a time. Whatever donut is passed in will only take 5%. So our basic structure here was make a pointer, create the object, store the reference in the pointer, then we can use our magic dot operator going through the handle. Penguin dot, well what do we want to access? The name, assign Pablo to name. Now we have our object pointed to by penguin, what do we want to access there? Species. I'm going to store the string emperor penguin in uh, the penguin's member variable species. And then we call a public method, set byte size and percent, and we pass in 5, which symbolizes 5% of the donut this thing eats every time. So we did object creation 1 here with penguin, and let's flip over to take a peek at um, the creature object, and then we also made a donut object which we want to feed to that creature. So same thing, we made a pointer variable of type size donut, and the name of that variable is donut for penguin. So again, remember, this is the type, and then this is the name of our variable. We could have a thousand size donut variables. They just all have to have a unique name. And what did we store with that pointer? We stored a reference to our brand new size donut object. When this is seen by the compiler, it finds the class with exactly that name, and it follows the instructions to make a blueprint, an object out of the blueprint, and then it gives us back a reference to whatever object we created. And then we are able to use that handle, donut for penguin, dot, access its name variable, and set it to Chloe. We go through donut for penguin to access the object's size in millimeters, and we set it to 32. 
So as of here, shrink, we have a creature object and we have a size donut object, so object two. These are both interacting when we jump down to our final line, line 48. And the way that they're interacting is we are passing donut for penguin, which is type what? Donut for penguin is type size donut. So remember, donut for penguin is a pointer to a donut object sitting in memory. And we are giving this donut object reference to the eat donut method on our penguin object. Penguin, we have to go up and look. Penguin is type creature. And because it's a creature, it has an eat donut method on it. And so I can call eat donut. And eat donut requires a reference to a size donut object, which is precisely why I made donut for penguin here, because I knew I had to feed the penguin, or feed the donut to the penguin. And this is the relationship between these three classes. Notice it takes a lot of a lot of tracking in our brains to to keep all of this in line. Let's actually jump to this view, which will help us see it a little bit more clearly. It's critical that I realize that I've got to do quite a bit of reading work. When I make my penguin object here, it's something I have to remember that it is a creature, it is type creature. So just because I see the word penguin, I don't know what type it is. If I type penguin dot, I get this nice listing of all the possible member variables. But remember, I could have a creature, so we could imagine our creature object, this is, ooh dear. I draw a penguin. Rink. It's not a terrible penguin. Okay, so this is type creature, but it's pointed to by the variable called penguin, little case penguin. We could totally have another pointer variable. We let's say we named this penguin Stan. We could have a a pointer variable called Stan pointing to that penguin. It's like having an address marker for your house. You've got one house. But you can throw up as many placards with your address number on it as you want. My house is 2209. I could plaster my front yard with signs that say 2209. I still only have one house. That's how our pointer variables are working here, is they are handles to the object. So we pass around variable penguin to get at our creature object that has its own member variables. In our case, it has name and species. So inside this particular penguin, we store its name and we can store its species, etc. Okay, so after we've created our creature object and we've pointed to it by penguin, we set its bits, and then this is done with that first section. Our donut object, similar deal. Now in this case, we use the new keyword, go to the blueprint, and make a nice donut in memory. Now remember, this donut, when it's created, the blueprint says you will have a string type variable sitting inside this instance, and it is called name, and you can store in it whatever you want. In our case, we're storing the name of the penguin, Chloe. We also have a variable inside the penguin called size in millimeters, which we store uh, 32 in. So we make the donut, we set it up, and then we're ready for this big line. So on our creature object, remember, blueprints create member variables and method. The penguin knows how to eat donut. But what does it require? Remember, if we look at this method, eat donut, it requires a size donut object in order to do that eating. So that's what we have to give it when we call eat donut and that's precisely what we're doing here so donut for penguin is getting sent to the eat donut method now how do we do that sending 
we want to think about it. It's not that we are sending this whole donut into eat donut. It is that we have a reference to this donut. Oops. So we have a reference to this donut called, oops, sorry. We have a reference to this donut called donut for penguin. So when we send in, so this handle variable for this little penguin is donut it's donut for penguin. So we're going to pass in this reference here. Same guy. These are connected. They're pointing to the same object. So when we call eat donut, eat donut is going to accept a reference to this donut object. And then once it gets it, it can call the method on our donut object called simulate eating, because that's what it has in it. Okay, so that is a lovely diagram of how it is that we have several things going on in our object land, creature land, and we've got to be able to digest these very carefully. Uh, we'll pick up on the next segment by tracing how the method calls actually get performed by the Java Virtual Machine. Stay tuned. Have fun.